What's going on everybody? Welcome back to The Wood Shop. If you're watching this video, you might be just started in the world of carpentry. You might have some experience and you might be ready to build stuff with wood. Well, look no further. I wanna share with you today the basic set of tools that we really started our business on and stuff that we still use today, eight years later, building all the custom furniture that we build here at Schooner Creek Designs. Come check it out. Okay, so as you guys know, if you've watched our channel for a while, we started building furniture just about eight years ago now. And we started uh, in a boathouse of a garage of a house that I was renting. And so I had very minimal tools. I've been working with wood most of my life though. And you know, building uh, jumps for skateboard jumps and bike ramps as, as a kid, uh, working with metal at a young age. And so like, I've always been around this stuff and we always had rudimentary tools, right? We had like a r old radial arm saw, chop saw, circular saw, just basic hand tools. And, and when I started developing my kind of craft as a woodworker, I started to get more precision tools really uh, geared towards furniture making. And so if you're sitting at home and you're like, I am so in love with the idea of building usable pieces of you know really nice uh, furniture stuff that has nice wood, uh, but you're like, I don't even know where to start. I don't know where to start with tools. Well, this is a great place to start. Obviously, right off the bat, you have to have a measuring device. We always are using these Stanley Fat Maxes. I find it really helpful to purchase a bunch of the exact same tape measure. That way there's no discrepancy and you kind of get used to the look and the feel of where all the hash marks are on the tape measure. Uh, and I tell you what, like I use this all the time and whenever I go on a job site and like pick up somebody else's tape measure, I'm always like, what the heck? But that's just me. So a measuring device is first and foremost what you need to do anything woodworking, right? So get a tape measure, get a good one, get one that feels really nice, has a good stopper on it. Um, these Stanley Fat Maxes, like I said, I find them on sale at Ace Hardware for like six bucks uh, at times, and I'll buy like eight of them right there because tape measures have a way of just getting away from you. Just in the vein of measuring devices, Having something that you can mark a 90 degree or a 45 degree line with is super essential. Obviously you've seen those little triangle squares. Uh, those are called speed squares and they work really, really well. Most times framers are using those or general carpentry guys are using those. I use one all the time. But a combination square is a really great tool to have. One, because you can change where your ruler is in relation to the straight edge. You can mark lines against a board sliding all the way down using kind of this notch in the end of the ruler. You can still mark a 45 degree line using this 45 degree edge. And it's just extremely helpful to have something that's a little bit deeper to mark longer boards or longer pieces with. Making sure you have a combination square or a, or a large square is super essential for getting good clean square edges on whatever it is you're building. Moving down the line into just rough processing raw material. You guys, you've seen uh, the chisel restoration video that we've done, uh, and you know that I bought that at an antique store, and I've bought a bunch of tools at antique stores. These are called wood planes, and I'm sure that you've seen them. And a wood plane is basically just a flat, cast iron surface that has a small blade protruding out the bottom of it. And what this is used for is running along a rough board and taking sharp, small cuts off the surface of the board to flatten and kind of smooth out any discrepancies in the levels of the board and the roughness of it. This is called a jack plane or a small block plane. And I use this actually in my work, uh, in, my, in my tool bag all the time. I pop this out, hit different kind of edges, uh, knock down corners, or even take off like glue squeeze out uh, with these planes. And the bigger planes are kind of for larger boards and taking stuff down. Some of the tools that I use all of the time, and you've seen them in a ton of videos, are Japanese hand saws. 
or a handsaw just in general. It doesn't necessarily have to be Japanese. I really like these specific Japanese handsaws. These are from Suazen and they are uh, pretty cheap on Amazon, right? For a handsaw, I think these are like 30 to 60, 75 bucks. Um, this is a dovetailing saw specifically because it has a ridge uh, on the back that keeps the blade nice and straight. Japanese handsaws cut on the pull, okay? So European and American handsaws usually cut on the push. You've seen them, it has the big handle in the back, large wide blade. And the only reason why I just don't like those is when you're pushing a saw through material, it binds with the pressure as you're pushing it through the material. With Japanese handsaws, they cut on the pull. And so there's no load on the blade other than allowing the teeth to cut through the grain of the wood. Like I said, I have a few of these hand saws. This one is, is kind of for dovetailing and joinery. And then this double-sided hand saw is for cutting just anything, any material, um, or any wood specifically, but just in any direction. You have a small tooth pattern and a larger tooth pattern. One is for cross cutting and one is for rip cutting. You guys, you've seen them probably in the majority of the woodworking videos that we've put out using these at least at some point in the project. So these Japanese hand saws are incredibly, uh, incredibly handy to have around. The other set of hand tools that is extremely essential, again, as you're looking at specifically building furniture or high-end pieces of, you know, or, or high-end woodworking projects is a really good set of chisels. This is just one of our many set of chisels. It comes, you know, from quarter inch all the way up to inch and a quarter. And these sets of chisels range in quality and price, but you guys just get something that is the absolute best for what you can afford even if you get something that is used. And again, back to the whole idea of finding stuff at the antique store, this is an antique store chisel. This is a really old chisel that somebody probably found in grandpa's workbench after grandpa passed away. They don't know what to do with it. It ends up at an antique store or a swap meet. And you guys, some of these old chisels I've restored, I'll, I'll post a, a link to um, the timber framing chisel restoration but I've restored these so that the bevel is extremely sharp. And this older material, if you know what you're looking for, do a little bit of research, but if you know what you're looking for, you can find awesome tools at the antique store for like three, four, five bucks a piece. So if you're like, man, I really can't afford, you know, a $250, $300 set of chisels, you guys, go to your local antique store, go to your you know, local swap meets, go to garage sales and just check out what they have. You guys, you, you'll be able to score something that you'll be able to have for a really, really long time. One other piece of equipment for rough processing or cutting boards to length is obviously a table saw. So we have a big uh, saw stop table saw that's a three horsepower table saw. And I started uh, with a really dangerous, very old Delta table saw, and I bought it on Craigslist, I think for like $200 from an old woodworker who was retiring and getting rid of his stuff. And I tell you what, that saw helped us build a majority of our business. Um, it was very scary, had no safety, uh, you know, um, components to it, uh, and it was extremely powerful, but it worked for us. You guys have seen our track saw in a ton of the videos that we've posted in here. If you guys have limited space and a small garage that you're working out of or a basement that you're working out of, or maybe you even have to do woodworking in your driveway, buying something like a track saw is gonna be hugely advantageous to you. You can rip cut long boards with the track saw. You can cross cut the ends of glued up tables with the track saw. And so make sure you go check out and do some research. Either a circular saw or a track saw is gonna be super essential for just processing your material. Routers are something that I had no idea how important they were with woodworking until a couple years into my carpentry. We have several different routers ranging in large horsepower to small, more finished routers. This Makita router right here uh, does a wide variety of stuff from plunging to surfacing to 
you know, chafing edges, molding, doing a whole bunch of different stuff. And so does this tiny router, right? So this is a small porter cable. You've seen it again in a bunch of videos, knocking off edges, chamfering corners, doing a whole bunch of different stuff with this. If you can only find one, get as big of a router as you can. That's my advice. If you can find a router, whether it's again on Craigslist, at a garage sale, find something that has large horsepower and hopefully something that has a plunging feature. You will be blown away by how many projects having a router will be really helpful on. We use the threaded inserts in the bottom of our table to attach metal bases to. I plunge all of those with a half inch router bit. We cut the corners, shape the edges, make grooves, make slots. Having a router is super essential. Okay, that kind of gets us through the majority of cutting and processing your material. Then it comes down to finishing. How do you get a nice, flat, smooth finish? The only way to do it is with sanding. As you've seen, we have most of the Festool line of products. This is the Rotax sander. We use it all the time. It comes in the orbital and the um, rotational sanding. Uh, you guys, this is a absolute workhorse. We've put a lot of miles on this thing. But you're like, dude, I'm not buying a Festool sander. That's totally okay. We have used for years different corded and cordless DeWalt or Makita or Milwaukee sanders that accomplish really a very similar finish. It just takes a little bit more time, but you can find sanders, palm sanders, old sanders, again, at these garage sales for super, super cheap. Check your Facebook marketplace, check your Craigslist locally and get a good sander. And if I have any advice for all of this stuff is it's better to buy a better quality tool used, especially if you know what you're looking for, than it is to buy a new lower quality tool that you can afford just right then. Guys, if I had you know anything to say is, is just get the best tool you can possibly find for what you can afford. Good tools make all the difference in the outcome and the ease and the stress of each project. When you have something you know you can rely on, you know that will work, and then you know that will work well, it just makes everything work that much better. That's kind of just an overview of some super essential tools that we started our business in, as well as use every single day here in the wood shop, and hopefully this gets you kind of pointed in the right direction have something to measure accurately with, have something to flatten and level boards, have something to cut these pieces of material with, have something to refine the pieces of material, and have something to finish the pieces of material with. You guys, just sitting on the bench right here, you could do a lot of projects that you could be really proud of and really happy with to hang on the wall, put on the house, put next to your, you know, your couch, your end table, your coffee table, your credenza, your dining table, whatever. You can make it happen. All right, so obviously if you watch the videos, you've seen us use our Powermatic 20 inch planer, our joiner, our table saw, our big drum sander. And you know, these are like truly, these are big luxuries, right? So we have worked a long time before being able to afford uh, and use these pieces of equipment. And it seems daunting. A, a lot of YouTubers, uh, specifically woodworking YouTubers, have like all these really nice tools. And, and that's awesome. I'm, I'm super excited for all of them. I remember watching YouTube when I was kind of like first building furniture and feeling super intimidated. I mean like, man, I don't belong here. I don't have enough money for this. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I tell you what, if you just keep doing this, you just keep working at it and you do want to make it something that is like your career or your profession, you can get to the point where you can afford these pieces and you can buy them. I mean, we did it. So literally anybody, <laughs> I, I f firmly believe anybody can make that happen. You guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope this was helpful. I hope this was inspiring to you. If it was, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button and we'll see you on the next one. Good luck with your woodwork.